This is Twit. So, uh, Bruce Schneier, what does he say uh, about go to well, fail? Hmm? So, this is last Thursday, Bruce uh, blogged and then also da- added an update on the same day, also on Thursday, February 27th. So, he, <laughs> the title was, Was the iOS SSL flaw deliberate? Last October, writes wow. Bruce. I know. I speculated on the best ways to go about designing and implementing a software backdoor. I suggested three characteristics of a good backdoor. Low chance of discovery, high deniability if discovered, and minimal conspiracy to implement. The critical iOS vulnerability that Apple patched last week is an excellent example. Look at the code. What caused the vulnerability is a single line of code, a second go-to-fail statement. Since that statement isn't a conditional, it causes the whole procedure to terminate. The flaw is subtle and hard to spot while scanning the code. It's easy to imagine how this could have happened by error. And it would have been trivially easy for one person to add the vulnerability. Was this done on purpose? I have no idea, writes Bruce. But if I wanted to do something like this on purpose, this is exactly how I would do it. That's fair. And then he, That's fair. Yeah. yeah. And, and they, he, he, he edited to add after the blog was first posted. He said, if the Apple auditing system is any good they would be able to trace this errant go-to line not just to the source code check-in details, but to the specific login that made the change. And they would quickly know whether this was just an error or a deliberate change by a bad actor. Does anyone know what's going on inside Apple? Yeah, why aren't they talking to us? Yeah, uh, and and, uh, again, that's why they're... Their publication of this substantial security disclosure document, which is the topic of next week's podcast, it's so refreshing to get that. I mean, I, I remember, you know, even the the iOS seven point zero point six update that fixed this flaw that we've talked about last week, the go to fail flaw, and that Bruce just blogged about. Even that just sort of just sort of there was just like nothing. In the description, it said well, that's typical, uh, well. fi- fixes an SSL problem. Yeah, this oh, is well, completely that nice? how they are, um, and I don't really agree with their their way of doing things. But that is kind of how they do them. They've never been it's, very forthright. Right, they're behaving in more like a consumer product company than a computer company, and I so I can understand that they're you know I mean they dropped the word computer from their name. They they see themselves as a consumer product company. Yet they're selling computers. I mean, they're selling high tech gadgets that have this kind of vulnerability. You know, your can opener is a consumer product, and it doesn't have a problem with SSL vulnerabilities, but you know, iOS devices do. So, you know, they're sort of straddling, and and it would be nice if they were more forthcoming. I think you know we'll see wh- how they evolve in the future. But this document, as I said again, you know, does represent. Yeah. You know, a real, a much needed disclosure. I would like to see so a similar document explaining their code testing and validation process. Uh, right. It it begs to be explained now because that error is such a ridiculous error that it should have been caught many many ways, and yeah. the fact that it didn't get caught uh, really puzzles me. Well, and Bruce doesn't note here, but others have. I keep reading it that. You know, it was just a month after this was introduced into the code base for Mac OS X and iOS 6 that the NSA slides that Edward Snowden disclosed indicate that Apple joined Prism. <laughs> this is like, okay, well, again, we we don't know. But, ooh, does that timing look painful? So, Well, yeah. and if that's the truth... That would explain why Apple doesn't say anything. And so the the longer they go without explaining this. Oh, and, and Leo, can you imagine? I mean, we know what the install base of, of iPhones is. 
globally. Can you imagine on some level the pressure they must be under by the NSA to make yeah. to make surveillance possible? Yeah. I mean there, there we now know there there is pressure at some level there is pressure. So you know I I just and for, and for example this is why I suspended my work years ago on CryptoLink because this was this was clear this was coming and I didn't want to be in that kind of pressure. I mean, you know, we know what Le, what 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 Ladar Levinson went through and we've since heard evidence of other companies being pressured to make this information available. Apple has to be a target of that given, you know, I mean, I everybody I see is holding an iPhone. Yeah. 